Welcome to the Crawl Space Show, guys. Tanner Flowers here, and we're just now finishing up another brand new crawl space encapsulation. 15 days we've been stuck on this job. God almighty. Eight days straight of nothing but sump pump work, French drains, digging mud, and pure aggravation. Past seven, eight days straight, nothing but our normal crawl space encapsulation work. Gonna flip the camera around now, show you guys everything. Pay attention. We'll show you some before footage. You ain't gonna believe your eyes. Here we go. All right, guys, there's the brand new crawl door map build. Check that out, David. Look at that. I'll put the before footage in here right now. In the, in the door that he already had before, I could stick my whole hand across the top. Rodents, rats, mice, squirrels, you name it, could go right in there. You know we don't want none of that getting in here on top of our brand new encapsulation. Let's undo latch number one. Let's undo latch number two. Guys, What's behind door number one? Ha! Huh, just the best looking crawl space you've laid eyes on. Let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Let me kick my boots off. Just one second. Last thing I want to do is get mud in here inside this brand new job. Guys, let me just stop right here and I'll start going around. What you guys are looking at right here, everyone, is a 20 mil fiberglass reinforced poly. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna move forward now. So take notice guys, right now you're looking at this old, you know, this is probably a three mil black uh, vapor barrier that's been down in this home since it was built. And for this video, I'm just gonna go straight down this way and I'll make a left and go back towards the real problematic area that we dealt with for the first seven days here on this project. Um, also, over here to the left, this air conditioning system that's underneath here. Um, I don't know why they were done this way, but if you'll see those pipes underneath there, they go straight into the ground. You want to talk about aggravating, my goodness. Trying to get all that perfect right there, look at that. You know we did, though. You know we did. Let's go forward here, guys. Look to the right, you'll notice his first humidistat fan. Those humidistat fans take air from within this crawl space and send it outside. If you do not install those humidistat fans and you've got a crawl space that looks like what you see here with a full 100% encapsulation, it's gonna be really hard for you to find a crawl space that looks just like this. Unless of course you go to crawlspaceartist.com and look at our videos. But if you do this, or if you've got this under your house and you don't have those, you're going to have a stagnant air build up under here. That smell is going to come up into your household. It's going to smell like a family of cats have been living under here. You don't want to smell like cat piss under your crawl space, do you? Well, if you're getting in crawl space encapsulation done, you better put those in. Here we go. Over here to the left, you'll notice that we installed a Santa Fe Compact 2 under this crawl space. His square footage did not call for the advanced unit. Um, when I installed this thing, um, it was already up to 72%. It was at 55%. I actually had it shut off all day today because we've been under here putting in all the wall anchors, which creates a lot of dust. I always like to shut the dehumidifiers off while we're doing that because that filter system right there, it'll pull all that dust right into the front of it and really dirty up those filters, which have to be changed every six months. Okay, guys, remember when we started this job, right there's that sump pump basin. All of that right there was standing water. All of this standing water. I'll try to put some before footage in right now. Towards this way, you are going to see some standing water here momentarily. And a lot of the water is flowing down, down, down towards that direction right here. But I'm getting ready to stop all that crap because I'm going to stop it at the source. See, David's already got a French drain around the outside of this house, just like a lot of you have. But the way the ground is sloped, all the water from outside of his driveway is coming towards me. And if we look down here, that over there, that, that back wall, that is the furthest point. All that water's coming off that driveway, settling down into that low point, and I'll go over there in just a second, and all that water is holding up into this puddle right here. This was not here last week, okay? So now that we got here this morning and seen this, 
I'm always telling people, you know, worst case scenario in the future, if you were to ever get any water on top of the poly, we could come in at that time and put a sump pump in if needed. But guys, if you've got this much standing water and you run that encapsulation over that, and I don't care if you're as perfect as we are, and I know none of you are, but I don't care how perfect you do it, that water will come through a seam. All it needs is a pinhole, and you'll never even see that pinhole, but you'll come in here one day and you'll see water standing on top of your poly, and what are you going to do then? Well, let's go ahead and address that before it ever happens. Ha, can you believe that? Look at it now, guys. Just like what I said I was going to do, I'm probably going to install the basin somewhere exactly right in this vicinity where all this big puddle is holding up. I will run another drain line right over there to the edge of that pier and I will have it all one drain line, two drain lines coming over for a third. So three drain lines will all be coming into the basin which will be located right here. That will then have a sump pump in it. Right here from this pier there is a trench there's a trench running all the way along right over in here tied into that basin there's a trench that goes uh, 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 there's a trench that goes all the way up through that wall and across that wall uh, and of course all leads back to the sump pump basin. Let me sit still for a second right here, guys, to give you guys a better shot. Guys, coming up on this room right here, we had some wrinkles going on. Right here is where we had this trench that we had to dig. This was uneven ground. We leveled this off as best as we could through here. Um, the footer was uneven where they had over poured concrete right in there. Chiseled it all with a, a mortar drill. Guys, I mean, did everything that we could. Um, let me put a before picture in right now. Look at this. Let me make sure I've got a good grip on my phone. I don't want to drop it in there. That is one of the main trenches that we've got dug going back to that sump pump basin. If you remember um, in last week's video, pretty much that entire area over there was standing water. Um, the main basin hole is actually just below the basin itself. It does not have any holes drilled in it right now, so it is actually floating. Most people don't know two drill holes uh, even inside those things, but this trench goes all the way back up to that back wall and it goes, golly, my man, I hang on. I got a board right here. I really didn't want to, really didn't want to go over there and get in that, but it ain't like it matters. Going to be, going to be covered in shit anyway in a little bit, so it don't matter. So, let's uh, cross this board here and hope that I don't lose my balance. Uh, oh, okay, so, now, once again, there's where I just was. That trench was leading over there to the sump pump basin. There is a trench coming out from that side it goes all the way up through here. Okay. And notice all this dirt to the sides of this. That's exactly what we got to work on getting out of here today. And as it's coming out, we've got to work on bringing the rock in. So, just want to show all of you this trench then it goes all the way onto this back wall and right back down to the basin <laughs> now look tell me I mean that's the best that we could get it guys I don't want any wrinkles in any of our projects we strive for excellence but sometimes you can't help the way the ground lays guys but the most important thing, of course, is you don't see any more standing water, do you? And I'm going to take you all the way back here. Remember, everything I'm crawling on, everything you see back here was standing water. This has been one of the most aggravating projects that I have chosen to participate on in a very, very long time. 
Back here on this back side of the home is his second humidistat fan. Once again, what do these fans do, everyone? Why are these fans installed? What is their purpose? It's not to remove moisture, which is what a lot of you are sold on that they do. No, sir. No, ma'am. That's not the case. These things are installed to do what? Take air from within this crawl space and send it outside so that what? No stagnant air can build up and the smells go up inside this home and aggravate these homeowners. We don't want that. Right here, remember when we started this job, this dryer vent was completely disconnected. All the moisture and humidity that was building up under here from that was ridiculous. All these copper lines just the other day when I was doing the uh, video when we were doing all that sump pump work, if you'll remember, these lines overhead here were all soaking wet, completely dripping 100%. Now notice there is not a single drop of water present. Hmm, wonder if all this really works. Well, guys, we've been doing this straight since 2008. And I promise you one thing, if it didn't work, Old Tanner Flowers wouldn't be doing it. Guys, the sump pump right over there in that basin, notice that that comes up. There's a check valve right there that elbows over and comes all the way down, ties right into the drain line, and it's gone outside of the home. I put some uh, swimming pool noodles up there. I did not hear any noise taking place whenever this water discharged. However, I went in and put those swimming pool noodles up there just as an extra precautionary measure. I'll put this back over here show you guys one more time remember i'm actually on a drain line right now that goes over into that so once again guys there's a drain over there coming from that pier going into the basin there's a drain that starts there goes all look here the dehumidifier just kicked on ah uh, anyway i've got the dehumidifier plumbed into there as well it goes right down there which will all be pumped out Okay, guys, turn around here. Remember all this muddy mess. I want to show all you guys when I come out of here as well. All the dirt that we took out from under here. You are not going to believe the amount of dirt that came out from under this crawl space. Let me real quick just lay down right here and show David all of this so he can see it. Guys, we like for all of our customers to be able to see everything that they paid for. That is what we're known for. I'm sure if you've been following me for any time at all now, you're already aware of that. Check it out, guys. No, we do not miss anything. Look at the tops of the piers. If you just want to see, just to verify, look at the tops of the piers. Look at the tops of the piers. And all the aggravating hard to get to places. Look at the tops of the piers. Look at the tops of the walls. Try to find anything like this anywhere online. Be my guest. Look all you want to. You're going to come up short. I'll promise you that. Unless you want to go to crawlspaceartist.com and visit the world's largest crawl space encapsulation video library. David, also drilled that hole right there for you. Run that power line all, all the way out there for your barn that you wanted me to do. And guys, we're going to turn around now, get ready to make our way back out of this crawl space. We've got so much stuff lined up to do, guys. We've got crawl space encapsulations. We've got French drains. We've got sump pump installs. We've got inspections out the wazoo, guys. I appreciate each and every single one of you so very much. Guys, if you got any wildlife problems, hit us up. ClevelandTNWildlifeRemoval.com If you got any, uh, stumps that need grinded in your yard you're tired of trying to mow around them you know you're hitting them with your mower or whatnot hit us up clevelandtnstumpgrinding.com all you got to do is send me over hang on just one second all you got to do guys is send me over a text message with the pics of the stumps that you need removed and i will reply back with a price a free quote for you and let you know, uh, you know, if you want to get it done, all you got to do is let me know your address and we'll put you on schedule. Guys, David wanted all this dirt put under his porch. I want you guys to look at this. All of this. All the way down. And this is a big porch. Came, came out from under that crawl space. My goodness, guys. I better watch what I'm doing. I just ran into a satellite dish. 
go end up cutting my friggin' head open. Guys, thank you all for following along. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for watching our videos, sharing our videos. Guys, we really appreciate everything. And <clears throat> David, thank you for letting us do this work for you, brother. I'm going to lock everything up for you now. And we're about to get on down the road. And, uh, and as always, guys, you already know it. You already know. What am I going to say? What am I going to say? We're going to see you on the next one, baby. Woo!